So for over five years, I'm receiving messages and emails every day that what I'm doing is wrong and that the science has not resolved chronic fatigue syndrome yet. But what if that's actually not true? Because when I stumbled upon the science that is older than 20 years, I was like, why did nobody tell me? Because knowing this could have decreased the amount of years that I was stuck. Because most of these research come from the early 2000s. And some of, the, some of it is even older, from the 1970s, for example. They knew. So the question is then, why don't we know? Why don't you know? Is it that medical science is corrupt? I mean, I do love some conspiracy theories. But when I look back at my own stories, um, I think that there is something else going on. Because when I just developed chronic fatigue syndrome, I think after a month, more or less, I went to my GP. And that was actually a very wise woman. And she told me about the signs that she had read. She told me about a woman who probably does the exact same work as what I'm doing right now. And she gave me a post-it with the number and the name of the lady. I never called her. I still remember that white post with that handwriting. It was lying on my table for months until I threw it away. And every once in a while, when I meet someone with chronic fatigue syndrome in real life, I tell or we tell what we are doing about the releases, about the psychological aspect. And instead that someone is reacting like, wow, cool, tell me more about this. It's the exact opposite. The first response is always anger. How dare you? Because people feel dismissed. People want their symptoms to be taken serious. And they still think that when you talk about psychological components and emotions, and about psychosomatics, for example, that that means that it's not real. So people feel dismissed. And they have probably feel, felt dismissed much, much longer. Because they're also dismissing their own emotions. And they're dismissing the research as well. And maybe you're right. Maybe the biggest need for people with, with a chronic illness is sympathy. And maybe I'm not doing that enough. I mean, I'm a guy, I think, in solutions. I wish to help people with solutions. But maybe the solution is sympathy. And maybe I'm not doing well enough there. So the question is, are you actually ready for the research? Are you ready for the science? And if so, then write ready in the comments. And it's so easy to still dismiss this research and to write comments like this. And in the past, when I was still coaching uh, many people who were not in the program, um, with almost a thousand different people, I've managed to switch their symptoms on and switch their symptoms off. Even though they were highly skeptical about my work because they identify with all kinds of labels such as Lyme, uh, mitochondrial damage, uh, physical components, etc. You know, it's not easy to talk about this. If I wanted to be successful, I would have found another way to talk about it. For example, I could implement some of the, the research that is more accepted about the autonomic nervous system, for example, or the vagus nerve. And then we can say, oh, the vagus nerve is wrong or the autonomic nervous system is wrong. Because we always, as human beings, we fail to ask the deeper question, why? Why? Why the vagus nerve? Why the autonomic nervous system? Why exactly these two systems of the body that heavily interact with an emotional state? Because the vagus nerve and the autonomic nervous system are not the problem. And the science suggests that. It's not the problem. So why is nobody else talking about this truth? Well, the truth is like a cancelled Netflix series. Nobody wanted to look at it. Nobody. Instead, we talk about other things. Neuroplasticity. And the same influencers are invited because they attract a big audience. And maybe drip by drip, they're starting to implement some of the signs. For example, uh, the vagus nerve or the autonomic nervous system. But they fail to go deeper. For example, when I read the research, 
I think it was as well, in 2017. There was a man called Dr. Jane, uh, Dr. John Eaton. He wrote a book called Reverse Therapy. There was another scientist, Dr. Veronique um, Mead. Have you heard of them? Probably not, right? Because it's not interesting to invite them. Because if you want to get rich, if you want to have followers, then bringing in people who are not known doesn't really help, right? But now, when it's obvious that the old methods are not very effective, what you see is that the big influencers who have rejected these theories are slowly starting to adopt them. But is it fast enough? Is it good enough? Because why not go deeper? Why not tell the truth in a world where nobody wants to hear it? Where you get cancelled for speaking the truth? Where science is even, okay, well, you guys don't want that. You know what? We're just going to start from scratch. And then science is going to come with all kinds of things. Yeah, there is indeed a mitochondrial problem or indeed an oxygenation problem. Here you are. And then, okay, the next, the next research, which is probably then the exact same that people already did 30 years ago. Yeah. Oh, wait. It has again to do with the vagus nerve and the limbic system reacting on an emotional state. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll put the links to Dr. Um, uh, John, John Eads and Dr. Veronica Mead. Dr. John Eads wrote a reverse therapy and Dr. Meads has a, a free PDF, I believe. But, but then the question is always, then what? And that's where the release process comes in. That's where you connect with your body or you create safety. That's where you dive into your emotional body. That's where you dive into your mind, where you let go of all the beliefs, where you let go of the identity of the person that is struggling, where you become really yourself again. That's the release process. And by implementing that, you get these kinds of stories. It's like a wonder, actually. <laughs> you can't believe it. Like one hour before I had so crazy symptoms and now I feel really good. It's really strange, but it really works. So good luck. This is it. Accept it. Like, if we really want to heal, if we don't want to stay sick for the rest of our lives, this is it. And I'll put a link to all the researches below and as well um, the video that I once made with the exact signs. I'll link it as well. It's like, take a look at it. Have an open mind. It's worth it. And even though if, when you think there is structural damage, when your symptoms are related to a bacteria or to viruses, because most people, uh, they have this healing phase started after uh, an infection like that. Even in these situations, there is nothing terribly wrong with you. The science suggests it. We can just switch it on and off, or maybe you can just slowly taper it and slowly improve by dealing with the underlying causes. So write ready if you are ready for listening and hearing the science and taking a step further. And as well, please like, subscribe, share, and I wish you a beautiful healing journey.